Hi everyone, so we're back on our second weekend of netball. Um, I hope you all watched that first match. It could have gone either way, to be honest with you, before the game. I'm not sure I could have called it. Um, and I think that's what we saw right at the beginning. I'm a bit disappointed actually with quarter one, um, from my, in my opinion, just loads of passing errors really early on from both teams. Um, and I, I think some of the, um, sometimes the in storm trying to force the ball in. I just think it was a bit scrappy, a bit to and fro. Um, and I think my expectation from the first um, games would have been that that would have been addressed a little bit more. Um, but it didn't it didn't end like that. So that's a positive. Anyone else nervous, by the way, when Jay went down? <laughs> Everyone thought, oh, God, right near the end, Jade, um, Jade Clark went down, looked as though she might have twinged her ankle, but got back up and got on with it. So all good. Quarter two saw no changes from either teams. Um, Rhino's first centre pass, breaking call. Again, you start to think, really, how many errors are we going to bring into this game? Um, but actually, Rushton was holding quite tall and they were feeding her quite well. Solo was getting lots of turnover, but a lot of it was created from arms over pressure beforehand. Um, and what we saw a couple of key times was Storm bringing in the ball through quite quick. When they bought it through quick, it flowed really nicely. Um, when they were looking, their timing was on. Um, so they were doing their pre-moves, they were driving, they were putting that ball into space, driving onto it. When that was happening through the court, it was really nice for them and it flowed really well. And inevitably, when it was like that speed through turnovers, you got a one-on-one -on -one with um, Bailey in the circle, which benefits Storm. You know, she's a tall player. They should really be able to feed her well. And it, to be fair, the start of the game, they were struggling to get the ball into Karen Bailey and I'm not really sure why. I mean, the defence for Leeds Rhinos were doing a really good job. So you had Vicky Asola and Paige Kindred doing a really good job moving their feet around. And Paige Kindred, as a wing defence goal defence, has been doing an excellent job. But it shouldn't have been that hard to feed um, Karen Bailey from the outset, especially considering how tall she is. What we started to see for Rhinos was them struggling to feed their circle. They'd done it really well to start off with. And we saw them starting to, um, Rhea Dixon starting to back off from shots as well. A couple of missed shots. Um, and it was just that attacking third that was becoming a bit of a problem. Storm went into the second, it went into half time, two ahead. So it was 25-23 going into half time. Um, I don't think anyone wrote Rhinos off per se, but I think we're starting to see, we had to see a change. If there wasn't a change, then we're going to grind out the same. They're probably going to get the same results. And it looked as though Storm was becoming a bit more confident. Anyway, quarter two, quarter three, sorry, saw some big changes. Mickey Austin came on at centre for, um, sorry, Storm. Yes, Parsons went to wing attack. And what we saw for Rhinos is we saw a change at wing defence and a change at wing attack. So Hall came on and Harris came on. It wasn't that Brierson wasn't doing a good job. She was providing deep links, I think, for their through court, which was working quite nicely. But like I say, just struggling to get that ball into the circle at times. So the changes, um, I must admit, the first, I think it was like the first um, pass or the first centre pass that they had and the ball just, um, oh, just fumbled the ball, didn't get it in. And it, I think everyone thought, oh, maybe it wasn't the right change, but actually it turned out to be a good change, a positive change. Rhino struggled to score at the beginning of this quarter, but at the, at the second half of this quarter, they really started to pull away. So Rhea Dixon became way more confident and started to put those balls up. And right from the beginning, she was putting balls up, even if they weren't going through, but then they started to go through. And that's what they say, isn't it? You miss 100% of the goals that you don't take. So it was really nice to see her building in confidence and putting those up. And then um, Sienna Rushton as well was getting on the end of rebounds. I think um, Storm need to look at their defensive rebounds because Rushton got an awful lot of rebounds. Rushton was holding good positions. They, she was starting to pop them in as well. And Rhinos were playing really well. Um, one thing that happened to Storm this quarter is they got a little bit static. So they left, um, they lost a lot of their pre-moves. They were expecting ball to land, stood still. They were expecting ball to land when they were just moving on to it a little bit. And we've seen Rhinos' defence. They are relentless. They are not going to sit back and let you wait for the ball to come to you. They're going to take it. So we saw a lot of mistakes actually by... Um, storm and we saw turnover by rhinos and we saw rhino start to bring that turnover through to goal as well so the end of quarter three we saw rhino score 12 in that quarter to storm seven so it was a five goal difference in that quarter obviously considering how the score was already it made rhinos go up by three now everyone says this is the championship quarter is it going to change and you i guess you kind of thought the storm had to do something to change it but what could they do so they bought sophie kelly on a goal attack 
Um, and I guess that was for Sophie Kelly Speed. We've seen her play. She plays brilliantly. Frankie Wells, I thought, had had quite a good game. Um, was the lack of movement down to her in the third quarter? I'm not sure it was. I think it was just maybe that mix up of positions. They'd started with um, Yaz in centre um, because of Mickey's injury, I assume. And Yaz had done a really good job there at bringing that through. Um, and I think I don't think that Mickey Austin um, lacks any speed at all. I think it was just that change. Um, and I'm not necessarily sure that Frankie Wells coming off would, you know, made a massive impact. However, it was much better through court to start off with by Storm. They started to get that speed. What you saw now, however, was the lack of errors by um, Rhinos. So I think Storm did a good job in this quarter. They bought some speed on Sophie Kelly. That I mean, she had a couple of um, a missed pass and a handling error, but nothing compared to... Nothing that you would pin it on to say it was the change of Sophie Kelly that made the difference. Um, but what you saw, you saw Leeds not making any errors. So they were scoring off their centre pass and scoring off their turnover. Um, Storm was still playing nicely. There were still some good links of play, still a bit static in times. But um, it really was Rhinos that I think took it away. Rushton and Dixon were playing so well together in that defensive circle, in that attacking circle, sorry. And the defence of Storm just couldn't beat that combination. We had um, a lot of quick balls going through, so it was one on one with Rushton. When it wasn't, when it was two on one against Rushton in that circle. Rhea Dixon would play the ball out and play herself in to create that opening. So they were less, they weren't forcing as many two-on-one balls in. And ultimately they came out with a win. It was a much higher scoring quarter for, for both teams in the respective numbers of goals. Storm scored 12 that quarter and Rhino scored 15. So Storm were consistent in their first, second and fourth quarter in their scoring. I mean, they scored 12 in the first, 13 in the second. 12 in the fourth, so consistent in that level of scoring, but in the second, in the third quarter, they only scored seven. Rhinos, their biggest scoring quarter was that quarter, and it just showed that they could just, you know, when they were playing without those errors, when they were minimizing those errors, they were capitalizing on the scoreboard. And if you think about that progression in such a small amount of time, that progression from quarter one to quarter four, they are a team to be reckoned with. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention about Rhinos is they seem to apply defensive pressure on different phases of the game together at the same time. Now, I know this sounds silly because actually that's what you kind of want from your team, but it's not what we necessarily see all the time. So Rhinos seem to step it up defensively um, at different phases. So, for instance, you'll see them all really challenge hard for that first phase and put massive pressure on that centre pass on the first outlet ball. Or you'll see them all challenge really strongly on the second phase. But what they seem to do is they are united in what they do. So they're not necessarily playing seven individual players. They're really playing as a team. Attack or defence, they play as a team. And those connections are really hard to find. And what's more impressive is that they've got those connections. They play that game plan and they play the game plan consistently together for four quarters. Consistently together together regardless of who is on the court let's bear in mind that they changed their wing attack and wing defense at half time and you might think it would have a negative impact but it doesn't have a positive impact because they all know the game plan they all obviously buy into it and they all believe in it and you have jay clark in the middle leading that team i'm sure it's not all just down to her but i'm sure she has a massive impact in really dictating when they are doing these attacking and defensive structures and then playing it together. So yeah, amazing game. Mickey Austin did say at the end that she didn't think that anyone would have backed them um, before this game, before going into this game. Um, and it was only the first quarter and the second quarter that made people think that they could win. And I think she's off the mark a bit there. I think Storm have showed that they can and they, they do have the capacity to beat some of the some of the bigger teams, some of the teams that you might even pit for the top four. However, they have to minimise the errors. Sophie Kelly coming on, I mean, she has the speed um, and she has the ability, the, they have the capacity, is what I'm trying to say. They have the capacity to play against the top teams. They have the capacity to take the scalps off some of the top teams. What they don't have yet is the ability to play those four quarters with the, without as many, with, 
limited error rate. Their error rate is too high. Cut out those errors, fix the basics, and I think they're going to be a team to be reckoned with. But I mean, we'll see. It's a hard task to minimise the base, minimise errors on basic skills because of the fact that it's under pressure. Um, and I think a lot of the sometimes the pressure from um, as a coach is to be playing these fancy game plans and these fancy strategies and to be looking at the teams that you're playing up against and how can we beat that team when actually sometimes it's a case of looking at your team and looking at what you're going to do for you to play well. You get the ball 50% of the time. If you can make a team cut out all their errors and play that ball to goal, 50%, you know, for every centre pass that they get, it only takes one turnover to goal and you've won the game. And so I, if I was Surrey Storm's coach, that's what I'd be going back to look at now is that, you know, how can we minimise these errors? How can we do our pre-move so that we're free? How can we make those connections so we can play the ball to each other on extension, collect that ball and then deliver a good ball after that? What's the tipping point between that really good speedy play and losing control of the ball? Because that's the other thing as well, I think, that sometimes we, we, are, we see and that teams struggle with. They start to play faster and faster and faster and then they lose the ball. And then they say, I don't know whether they said this to themselves um, at half time when they, you know, shall we, okay, we need to control the ball. So what does control look like? And sometimes players slow down. Control doesn't necessarily mean lack of speed. It means controlled speed. It means knowing when to give the first time ball and knowing when to give the three second ball. It means being able to do those pre-moves. So when you are moving onto the ball at speed, it is less contested. And I think that's the critical thing that they're missing at the minute. Anyway, so exciting. Three more games to go. We've got a little bit of a break now. So I'm going to have a really nice Sunday roast lunch and then go for a little stroll ready for the next game. Bring it on.